Third grade, today we're on lesson five in our, in our science book. It's our last lesson in chapter one. You are on page uh, 22 where lesson five starts. We're on the back of our notes. So after we're done with our notes today, these are going to get put back in your folders so that I can get an awesome grade on those for you for um, our science so our, for our science class. All right, let's jump in. Page 22 in your book. Today we are on lesson five. Today we're talking about how plants from the past are like today's plants. So we're talking a lot about fossils today and um, things like that. In our science books, occasionally we're going to have things where the author of our science books say million years ago or whatever. Okay. Now, because we believe in the Bible, we believe in creation, which means that all that stuff that people believe about evolution, it's not true. It's not true. We believe that the Bible was created in seven days by Jesus, by God, right? So I'll, when we get to those parts, I'll just show you that we're just going to ignore those parts because we know creation happened because um, God created the world. How are plants from the past like today's plants? Fossils show the kinds of plants that lived long ago. In some ways, today's plants are similar to plants from the past that have disappeared. Plants that lived long ago. We learn about plants that lived long ago by studying fossils. It's the first thing in your notes. How can we learn about plants from long, long ago? Study fossils. All right? Now we're going to look at how is a fossil made. Pause the video if you don't have that done, because I'm moving on. A fossil is the remains or mark of a living thing from long ago. Look at the fern and horsetail fossils in the picture on page 23. Right here. Look how similar those look. How did they form? Each plant died and was pressed into mud. Okay, so plant dies, mud presses on top of it. Well, like any living thing, that starts rotting away. So the plant died. The plant rotted away, but the mud kept the form of the plant. The mud was already hardened as if that plant was there. Over time, the mud hardened to rock. Over time, rock, mud turns into rock. It gets really, really tough, and it's called sedimentary rock. The flat imprint of the plant is seen where the rock cracks open. Another kind of fossil is made when rock replaces the parts that have made up the plant. The drawings below show how it might have formed. This rock is called a petrified fossil. I'm so sorry. There you go, now you can see it. All right, so we've got a petrified fossil here. So look at this stump. It's buried in all this mud. Minerals eventually are replacing the wood as time passed. Then when this rock around there is removed, the minerals are still there, and that's what we call a petrified fossil. Page 23. Petrified wood can form when trees are buried in the ground. Minerals replace wood in the trees. At the same time, water breaks down the wood and carries it away. Over a long period of time, the wood is replaced by stone with exactly the same shape and markings as the original wood. Many kinds of plants that lived long ago are no longer alive. They are extinct. For example, ferns that live today look different from the ferns that lived long ago. Plants related to the extinct ferns and horsetail fossils shown in the photos live on Earth today. All right, so this is one of those ferns that was a really, really long time ago. Now, this says it lived about 350 million years ago. That's because the author of this book, the author of our science textbooks, don't believe that the flood happened. So a lot of these things that scientists that don't believe in God try to explain by saying, hey, this happened millions and millions of years ago, actually could have happened by the flood. The flood was something like the earth had never seen before. When the flood came, literally the entire earth was covered in water. You couldn't see land anywhere. That amount of water and that amount of pressure and change could create a lot of these fossils. So a lot of Christian scientists think that the fossils were not made over 350 million years, but rather a lot of them were probably made during the time of the flood. Now, this is um, two of those ferns that are 
um, now extinct, right? So what does extinct mean? Extinct, extinct means it's no longer alive. A lot of times with extinct, we think of dinosaurs, right? Something that's no longer alive. It doesn't exist anymore. We have all the fossils. We can find skeletons of, of, um, of dinosaurs, but they don't live on the earth anymore. So they're extinct. Then we missed number two, how is a fossil made? One, plant dies. Two, mud covers plant. Three, mud turns to rock. Excellent. Now, normally when we're in school, we get to do a fun fossil experiment that we actually use some, uh, it's called uh, Plaster of Paris, and we actually make a fossil and get to do some fun stuff with that. Um, hopefully, if we get to get back in school at some point, we'll get to do that. But for now, let's turn our page and look at this last one, plants change over time. Page 24 at the bottom. Plant fossils show us that the first plants did not have flowers or cones. Many were like today's ferns and horsetails. As earth changed over time, however, plants changed too. Trees that made cones appeared. Then plants with flowers appeared. Many of these kinds of plants have completely disappeared. Magnolias are flowering plants that first appeared when dinosaurs roamed the earth. The world was warm and wet year-round. Magnolias grew thick leaves that kept that they kept year-round. Their flowers bloomed for months. Magnolias, just like this, are alive today. Fossils show that the magnolia flower has remained unchanged for 100 million years. Now, we know that 100 million years isn't right. All right, but we mentioned that the climate changed too. Well, a lot of that is due to the flood. So when the entire earth was covered in water, the climate um, could have changed too, which caused dinosaurs to be extinct. But if we see something like this magnolia flower, it has stayed since, um, since we have fossils long ago, we can see that it's been the same and it's remained relatively unchanged. As earth changed, so did the magnolias. Some magnolias are now deciduous. They lose their leaves in the fall. Their flowers bloom all at once before the leaves disappear in the spring. Sorry, before the leaves appear in the spring. Even so, their leaves and flowers are similar to those of magnolias that lived long ago. So you can see at the bottom here, it gives us those examples. This is magnolia leaf from long ago. This is the deciduous magnolias that bloom all at once in spring. So this one's maybe just a little bit more narrow and this one's maybe a little bit more wide, but they're extremely similar, all right? It is amazing how God created the earth and how scientists can um, uncover parts of God's beautiful earth with their research and all the different things that they do. That is the end of our chapter, our first chapter. Next week, we're going to do a couple fun things to review, and then we'll have our first science test. Make sure you check this off on your weekly checklist, and have a great rest of your day.